Hey everybody, Rebellion here, and gonna bring you something a little different than normal. I'm gonna be talking about a game that's actually coming out soon and was given to me as a sort of a free copy. Well, to keep you guys informed, first and foremost, as I just said, this was given to me free of charge by the company, or the people that made this game, and they asked for my review and first impressions. I'm not getting paid or any of that, they just want some publicity to help us get out of there, and I said, Sure, it's a game, I can play it, and it looks interesting, so why not? With that out of the way, I had a hell of a time doing this. This is by far my biggest video I've ever done, and even if that isn't saying much with, that, with the type of videos I make, it's something for me. Still, let me begin by saying my thoughts on this game. Groundbreakers is a game that I can see why it was thrown at me, as it does ring a few bells that I'm familiar with. You can control a few little robots, like units on the field, with a different objective given at the start of each encounter. Each bot has the usual thing you expect, like HP and levels, but it also comes with a few things that bring some complexity to the system. The bots have skills you can unlock, and they level up and gain experience in, in the encounter. Each skill has a heat cost and a cooldown. If the bot's heat reaches over 100, they can't use any more skills, which will sometimes leave you in tough positions of having a skill off cooldown, but being unable to use. Still, some things are also different with the boss themselves. When their HP reaches zero, it isn't death in the usual sense, but instead they are transported back to your side of the field to be fixed up. After that, they are ready to be deployed off again and only really taking a hit to their durability. After their durability stat reaches zero, they cannot be fixed up, and they are, for all intents and purposes, gone from that one instance of combat and the rest of the encounter. Not only that, but each bot can offer more as they are customizable. Not in the pain or cosmetic sense, but instead of their effects that you add via a chip system. That reminds me a little bit of the like Mega Man Battle Network style games for the Navi customizer in those, or the, the inventory system in the Resident Evil 4 game with the briefcase and all that. These chips offer effects like dealing more damage or surviving a lethal blow and arriving instantly with 1 HP instead of being sent back for repairs. Not only that, but each chip is ranked so in the ever-so-popular system of common and uncommon, all the way to legendary, offering bigger bonuses for these effects. Some are unique, so that they can only have one of that type in, equipped at any given time. Even then, the bots can come themselves in different tiers that you can use different parts. Make the same robot, but sometimes a different requirement given the ore that, you're, that you use to construct them. They range from lowest being iron and you work your way up for, through silver, gold, cobalt, and more, making them stronger and more durable. Still, what is a good game without a good story? I personally put a rather high value on story in a game while this one has one, I'm still fuzzy on it. The tutorial of the game starts you off telling, you, telling me my character is becoming the CEO of a company and using the robots to take over other companies or something. The tour didn't tell me much aside from the basics in terms of story, but another mode did. I'll talk about that after I bring up some other things first. After completing the tutorial, the game began flashing a quest icon and moving me through what I had to offer. Enter the Infinity Mine. Or as I personally see it, the less demonic cousin of the item world from Disgaea. While I say less demonic, I don't mean easy, but just not as unforgiving as those randomly generated pieces of hell. After going at that mode for a bit, I looked at the game a, a bit and found a campaign mode. Funny that I wasn't started with that, actually. I wouldn't just think that it was going to be a story, but it prompted me for things like a map size and number of enemies. After leaving them on the default settings, it then started talking about the story. The apocalypse happened two centuries ago, melting the polar ice into the merging majority of the land underwater. Governments collapsed due to just riots and... Giant inhabitable cubes were built and linked to each other. Just go with it. And the rarity of the value of minerals skyrocketed. New corporations and organizations focused on dominating the mineral dominating the mineral rich areas began rising to power. This is where my character comes in as someone entering the game and trying to set the world on the right path while hoping to get a cut of the profit in doing so. Then I was thrown into what I can only compare as a mini civilization game of Companies conquering land. It threw me back to playing those five hour games with my friends, but this time was on a smaller scale, I think. You balance your currency that the land generates and action points that you get each turn to expand. Level up the land and conquer the map. 
Each instance of taking a new territory plays out like other maps that I played earlier in the tutorial, but sometimes in different modes depending on the encounter type. In one instance, it was simple, simply to kill all the enemy robots. Well, another one was a siege map, with the enemy trying to break through my defense and take out my base in the back. That mode quickly ate up a bit of my time, and after a few encounters and turns, I saved myself and left the campaign just to see what else the game had to offer. It was gonna grip me way too much. Then I noticed my little character portrait had a level number on top of it. Yeah, your player levels up and unlocks things. What these things are, I'm not all that knowledgeable on, as I didn't play as much as I wanted to. Still, I assume it will do things like unlock parts for the bot, or more chips to customize them with. Speaking of which, I did have some chips that were level restricted. I didn't really notice it at first because it didn't show them to me instantly, but after ticking a box that I believe said show all, it showed a bunch more that I had that I didn't notice but they were just all level locked. That's why I never saw them. There were some ranging from level 5 requirement all the way to level 20. After this, I started gathering my thoughts and thinking about what I've seen in the game and what it taught me. Mechanics-wise, it's pretty complex. Turns don't exactly take place and time it exactly in the form of a clock either. Each bot moves after set amount of time points has passed with their speed, low their speed lowering the cost based on how high it is. I touched on this earlier, but as the fight goes on, you deal damage or destroy other bots, you level them up on the field. They all have four skills, two being available at first, and two more that are unlocked as the time points tick down. Three of them can be leveled up four times as you gain points per level to invest in them, and the fourth one can be leveled up five times total, but I never got the option to do so. So maybe somehow you can do it, but I just didn't notice it. Going back to the maps, they all seemed to be randomly generated and often had random effects that changed how the map had to be played. One of these randomly generated features is height and elevation that the game tells you is advantageous. Yeah, having the high grounds is great and all, but it takes more movement points to get up to a certain elevation instead of having a jump stat that limits how high of an obstacle you can climb. With that said, when you move your units around, sometimes they will lower the terrain past they pass over it, almost like they carry weight. Still, it corrects itself a bit as time goes on, so it might be a visual thing, or it might be what I fear, in that I can unwillingly wear down my protective fortress by being reckless. Still, with the variety of random generation this game has, it still manages to have fun and throw more randomness with little events that happen. One instance was a tornado, or a sandstorm, something, appeared every now and then that just picked up whatever bot it found and just threw it wherever it wanted. On another map, if a bot ended its turn on a tile, upon leaving that tile, it left a little surprise. It left me a springboard. That would launch bots that tried to end or pass over it. This, la this last one led me to some hilarious strange fields that both saved me and threw me for a loop and forced me to improvise and be mindful of my positioning. After all this thinking being put down into a little text document for me to reference later, or now if I'm being a little cynical, I found an option that I was hoping to find, actually. Thankfully, the game does have multiplayer, and even better, it has a ranked board with weekly rewards and a shop to spend those rewards on. You get little points at the end of each week based on your rank, and you can spend those points to get better chips to enhance your robots. Still, with that, I found another option that was grayed out, but it unsettled me slightly. The option was for a march that was unclickable. It might be because it wasn't complete, or because I didn't have the level requirement for it. Still... Microconnections in games are a discussion all on their own, but for this initial play session, I didn't see any. Take that as either a positive or a negative based on your personal preference. Now hopefully you've been seeing a bit of gameplay or hearing some music in the background for the game, so it'd be easier for me than just describing it vaguely for you. At least I hope so, since I'm recording this and then planning to edit this later. Just hope editing me isn't lazy or pressure time. While the music is catchy, I wasn't exactly moved by it or humming it after the game closed. It was enough. As for the visuals, they were nice, but... I made an initial connection that I couldn't really shake. I had the thought that after looking at it, and at first glance, it looked like a high-end mobile game being ported to the PC. I just couldn't shake it after seeing it. Still, it does the job well enough, and that actually isn't a minus in my book either, as I do enjoy myself a good mobile game every now and then. Having said all that, and only remembering to mention it now, I actually haven't gotten that far into the game. 
if you couldn't tell already. With only maybe an hour and a half in, of time still in this game, it's still quite an unknown to me, but it's one that I'm more than willing to go deeper into. It is the kind of game that I could see myself streaming in the future, but not one that I would actually play regularly on my channel. The depth is there, and it certainly shows that it has more under the hood that I could see right now. Now, if I had the ability to name bots, I would jump headfirst into this and probably start a Let's Play and jam it into my currently playing games in my list. But without it, I'm just gonna play it regularly and enjoy it when I can. Probably stream it occasionally too on my free time. The game will be releasing on Steam June 15th, but it's still an early access title, so you can snag it right now and still enjoy it in its current state. Still, with a price tag of $9.99, I wouldn't exactly go out of my way to buy it personally unless it was on sale, but knowing what I do about it now, I would probably actually get it. Funny enough, though, in the email they sent me to play or play slash review this, they mentioned that it would be on sale for 25% off on the, on the launch of the week, so there's that. Now, this is starting to sound like a review, actually. Well, really. I can't say I will be giving it a score of any kind, as I haven't played long enough to really give it anything numerical or otherwise that would be a judgment on it. Still, for what I saw, I would recommend this game to anyone that likes their turn-based tactical games, with a bit of complexity in areas that I haven't seen often. As someone that has played many tactical turn-based games like Disgaea 1 through 5, Phantom Brave, Makai Kingdom, Mugen Souls, and... Sort of. Think about it now, actually. It might have a thing for NIS games. As that aside, as someone who enjoys games like this, I love that it was given to me for free to play and review, or given me to a first impression if you count it as that, and can't thank them enough for it. Really, you guys are awesome. Still, with this, I'm leaving you with my thoughts to let you make your own. Stay awesome, everyone, and I'm hoping you found something useful, or at least enjoyed this first impression video of Groundbreakers. I wouldn't say look forward to seeing more on the channel, but if you go to my live streams, you'll be bound to see me playing it every now and then just because it's fun as hell. <sighs> Dear God, this was stressful to make! It's not even that difficult to make, it's like the video is just, you know, me cutting up and stuff and putting things in, sinking and... Ah, but still! Ah, I'm thankful that I got to do this, it's a really nice little treat to be able to edit a video like this, but my... God, this is... It's like, it's not even that bad. I had to actually write a script for the first time ever in my videos. I actually had to write a script. And even then, it wasn't done easily. God damn it. I actually have the videos right here in front of, there's a clip right in front of me that you guys won't see. Enjoy the black screen. It is five minutes of continuous outtakes of me yelling, swear that I just mess up the lines. Ah. Still, enjoyed it. Enjoyed doing it. Nice little thing. Love the game, but... God forbid... I will probably not do one of these for a while. <laughs> Still, bye.